that they do, but the fact that so many countries came together to make it a reality. The ISS was built for research. Due to the lack of the effects of gravity and its location in space, the ISS provides an ideal place for experiments in areas like biology, physics, astronomy, meteorology, and others, with results that are different than the ones taken on Earth. According to NASA's website, as of today, the ISS has been occupied continuously for 11 years, 3 months, and 22 days. Many countries came together to make the ISS a reality. According to shuttlepresskit.com, a website made by Boeing, NASA, and the United Space Alliance, there were five major space agencies who cooperated to make the ISS. The US, Canada, the European Space Agency, Japan, and Russia. In addition, According to the October 30th, 1999 issue of the Advertiser from Adelaide, Australia, 16 different countries cooperated by donating money, equipment, or parts. This illustration shows just how big the ISS is. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? According to NASA's website, it has a mass of almost 900,000 pounds. To put that into perspective a little bit, you would need almost 120 Ford F-250 pickup trucks to equal the same mass. Since the first module was launched, there have been 135 subsequent vehicle launches to the ISS. 74 Russian, 37 from the United States, two from Japan, Europe, and two from Japan. Now that I've talked about who built the ISS, I'd like to briefly cover the daily life of the crew using an article I found on the European Space Agency's website. Since the ISS orbits Earth about 15 times a day, the crew sees 15 sunrises and sunsets. Therefore, their schedule has to be based on a fixed 24-hour schedule and not one that's based on dawn or dusk. It must take a little getting used to to experience night and day so often. They sleep in sleeping bags that are strapped to the wall. After all, there's no up or down in space, so it doesn't matter how the bags are oriented. However, as there are no effects of gravity which cause warm air to rise, a fan must continuously blow air on a crew member, or else their own exhaled air will suffocate them to death in their sleep. Speaking of fans, the station is fairly noisy, as there must be ventilation fans and filters running 24-7. They wear disposable clothes that they change every three days, since they don't have any washing machines up there. Showering must be brief to save water. Each astronaut is only allowed about one gallon of water per shower. Since water hangs in the air like everything else in space, a fan is required at the bottom of the shower to draw water into the drain. Water. It's very important, and yet it's not very readily available in space. As such, the wastewater from exhaled air, showering, and even urine is recycled back into clean water for drinking in showers. 
For the most part, humans on Earth can get away without exercising because gravity requires us to use our muscles all the time. Since they don't experience the effects of gravity on the station, several hours of exercise per day is required to help maintain muscle mass. All exercise equipment requires straps or elastic bands to hold them in place. As you'll see, he's got the elastic straps that goes over his shoulder and wraps around his waist to help to pull him down to the treadmill. The crew stays very busy up there, but in their brief free time, one of their favorite things to do is to simply enjoy the view of Earth. Now, I mentioned they were busy, but what do they do up there? Well, they do research. <coughs> According to a webpage from NASA's site from March 9, 2008, which I accessed using the Wayback Machine at archive.org, there are four main categories of research on or related to the ISS. In space, since they don't experience gravity like we do on Earth, it provides a good research platform to do experiments in physics, biology, and chemistry with results that vary from the ones that we have on Earth. Since the ISS has a great view of Earth from above, it's a great platform to study Earth and its environment. Being on the edge of space, the ISS makes a great stepping stone into future space exploration. Due to the launches needed to build and supply the station, it's helping to advance aerospace technology, especially through the commercialization of space transportation technologies. <coughs> Excuse me. As you can see, life in the space station has its perks. Not only do you get to travel so unbelievably fast, that you get to see the sun rise and set 15 times in 24 hours, but you get to do research, which may change our lives as well as participate in an international cooperation which is helping to unite the world. Sounds like a sweet job to me. So, who wants to join me in space camp next summer? <laughs>